And now for this week's Business Watch with William Lucy Smith. Hello, I'm William Lucy Smith from Chartered Accountants Deloitte & Touche with this week's Business Watch. Last week we looked at the complexity of valuations. We looked at the bases of valuations and the possible reasons why they may differ. The stock market, in a perfect world, provides the forum which takes account of all the differing information and opinions to determine the market price. The price quoted on the stock market is the price where the volume of shares supplied and demanded is in equilibrium. If the demand increases, the price should also increase. If the demand falls, the price will also fall. The perfect market theory suggests that as the stock market takes into account all known information and subjects it to full analysis by all analysts, the result will always be the correct price for the share. As all shares will find their correct price, then no share is a better buy than any other. This is a bit like horse racing. If the handicappers did a perfect job, all the horses would finish in a dead heat. Well, that's never happened yet and never will. Same with the stock market. At all times, new information is becoming available and is subject to both good and bad analysis. A lot of mistakes are made and many shares go up and some go down. It's very important for investors to recognize that shares are a risk investment. While large gains can be made through sound or lucky investments, losses can also be made. And in the last 10 years of the recession, many public companies have collapsed and shareholders have lost all their money. For example, Carry Finance, Workers Bank, Stevenson Ross, Woolworths, Batter, and Metal Box. In banks, depositors can rely on deposit insurance and the central bank, but no such comfort is available for stockholders. In some cases, the decline of the companies became progressively apparent and the share price continued to fall. In other cases, the bad news can come suddenly because prior information was faulty. The stock exchange is dynamic with prices changing every day as new information comes to hand. Stockholders must therefore be vigilant and keep in touch with their professional advisors. This is why I was particularly irritated to read the recent statement from the Bank of Commerce which urges their stockholders not to trade their shares until after the board has received independent advice on Republic's proposed bid. It is certainly legitimate to wait on advice before accepting or declining a takeover bid, as the bid must remain open for at least 28 days. With the stock market, however, prices change daily, and the current price is higher than the market value of Republic's bid. So Bank of Commerce directors should not be urging their stockholders not to sell, unless they have information that the shares have a higher value. And if they have such information, they must publish it. If not, their attempt to fetter the market is misguided at the very least, and could prove detrimental to their stockholders if the share price falls and no better offer materializes. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much. Goodbye. We'll be back after this break.